If you or a loved one has ever been harmed by a mineral sunscreen, just know that you are on the absolute right video at the right time. guys welcome back to the style and beauty doctor here on youtube i'm danielle this is gonna be a great video i mean it has to be because this is my second time filming it because the first time the footage was in and out of focus i don't know hopefully this is fixed now so i'm gonna list the timestamps because this video is gonna be in different sections but you know watch the full video but in case you need to reference back to something the timestamps are there so you know where to go in and, and click and whatnot so yeah this video is is going out to all of you that have <laughs> that one, and if it's not one, then maybe you have like five or six mineral sunscreens, just just collecting dust. Hopefully they're not expired because, you know, expired sunscreen is useless. <laughs> but they're collecting dust because at one time or another, they did you wrong. I'm going to show you in this video a very easy way to use makeup. Now, wait, wait, wait. Don't you click off. <laughs> Don't you... Don't you click off this video. <laughs> I know some of y'all don't like makeup, okay? But I'm gonna show you something very easy that even people who don't like to wear makeup can do to make these some of these mineral sunscreens look better on our richly melanated skin. I'm also gonna be talking about some new mineral sunscreens that hit the market, one from Dr. Dennis Gross and one from Dr. Brand. We're also gonna be talking about mineral sunscreen and makeup, how to reapply sunscreen when you're wearing makeup, which I've talked about a bunch of times, but you know, it's worth repeating in, in more videos as the channel and the community grows. Um, so let's just jump right into it. Um, if you're looking for more mineral sunscreen reviews, I got you. Your girl has got you, especially when it comes to a deeper skin tone. So make sure you check those out. So <laughs> these two were promising. I, I was browsing through Sephora, looking to see what was new. And now, now mind you, if you're new to this channel, welcome. But I am someone who just prefers a chemical sunscreen. Mineral sunscreens aren't my fave. However, I'm so passionate about everyone having options for sunscreen, so particularly my fellow melanated crew looking for sunscreen options. So it is it it is my pleasure <laughs> to try a lot of these sunscreens out for you and, and talk about it here on this channel because you guys are so awesome, right? So anyway, this one seemed pretty promising. So this is the Dr. Dennis Gross All Physical Lightweight Wrinkle Defense Broad Spectrum SPF 30. So it says it's oil free. It is a very lightweight formula, which is great because we're getting into the warmer months and no one wants some big thick paste on their face. Um, this one is not that bad. Is it the best mineral sunscreen I've ever tried? No, I have a video on some that come pretty darn close to being probably the best out there so far. So make sure you check that out. Um, but it's not bad. The thing is though, um, when I put this on, again, it's lightweight, I really like that. I like that it glides on the skin because some mineral sunscreens you do need to, no, this is just for you to see the glide. This is obviously not how much sunscreen you would put on your face, but you see the glide, it like glides. Some mineral sunscreens you just gotta put some elbow work in to get that to blend out. I don't like that. Um, so that's really great about this. The only thing though, is that on my skin, it looks shiny. I have oily skin um, and I didn't like that because that shininess from jump <laughs> means it's gonna look a mess within just a few hours as it starts to warm up more here. Um, another thing is it still has a cast. There, there's still a cast. Um, if you're someone with facial hair, because I know a lot of you guys um, that watch that have beards, you you know, you do wonder if a mineral sunscreen, if it's gonna catch in your hair. Now, while I don't have a beard, I do have very thick um, edges and, <laughs> and thick sideburns. This definitely caught in there, and then it had like that, you know, obviously the white cast was now in my dark brown hair, so there's that. Um, but I will have to say, give it a couple of minutes to get ready 
and, and present herself. She doesn't look that bad, but there's still that cast. However, once I, now you, people who ate makeup, I hear you, okay, all right. You don't wear makeup, you, you invest in your skincare, I heard you, <laughs> right? I'm just messing with y'all. But there's something that's very simple and easy that you can do to mitigate the cast on some, something like this. And I would have written this off as being too greasy for me had it not been for this little thing that I did. So I pulled out my Cover FX Pressed Mineral Foundation. I wear the shade N110 because um, I'm a dark brown skin tone with neutral undertones. Now, you don't have to have this particular brand. There are lots of powder foundations out there. I just happened to pick up this one from in my little stash. Um, another good thing about this one in particular though is that it does have iron oxides in it. I have a video on iron oxides and how they help to give you some protection from visible light, which is gonna be quite helpful if you're someone with um, a persistent pigmentation issue like melasma or like, you know, severe hyperpigmentation. So make sure you check out that video. So it's got the iron oxides in here. A lot of foundations are gonna have iron oxides. Just check the ingredients. Take a big fluffy brush tap it over the brush, swipe it over, swipe it over your face, and you're already looking like your natural color, right? But see, the thing is you can't stop there. And I know, I know, you don't like to wear makeup. I heard you, right? The thing is, once you put something like this on, it's going to even out your color, but then you're gonna look flat, right? And we don't wanna look flat. So you're gonna take a bronzer, right? This is the Fenty Beauty uh, Thick Mint <laughs> Bronzer, the deepest shade that they came out with. But you know, other brands make bronzers that work for us. I've got a couple of videos on some ones at varying price points, so check that out. Um, but essentially, you're gonna take another fluffy, you can take the same fluffy brush if you want to, but if you have a separate bronzer brush, but if you're not wearing makeup, I doubt you have all these brushes. Just get a big fluffy, big dotty fluffy brush, right? and you swipe it in here, and then you dust it along the perimeter, right? It's almost like you're making three along your temples, you know, like right up in here, um, just above your cheekbones, and then along your jawline, right? What that combo is going to do is going to warm up your face and give it a little bit more dimension, especially if you use a bronzer that's a little bit deeper or warmer than your skin tone. Um, you can also use a powder that's like two to three shades darker than your skin tone also, um, if you don't have a bronzer handy. But that's gonna be able to cover up the cast and then add some dimension to your face and you didn't have to do much for that. So once I put that Cover FX powder on top, this didn't look as shiny on me <laughs> and it was actually workable. So I would have written this off if, if I had to wear it just on its own but then adding that makeup on there definitely helped to zhuzh it up. And that's something that you can try with almost any mineral sunscreen um, in some cases, and we'll, we'll talk about that. So next, the Dr. Brandt Liquid Sun Shield. Um, this is their Daily Brightening Mineral Sunscreen uh, Broad Spectrum SPF 50. Um, this is similar to this one where it's like kind of like that same kind of like really lightweight, um, fluid, fluidy <laughs> type of texture. Um, it's also gonna give you some nice glide, right? So it's not like you have to like <clears throat> rub to get it in. It's gonna be like a nice glide on the skin. There is fragrance in here. I don't mind the smell. I, I'm not someone who like has a big to do about fragrance in skincare unless I don't like the actual smell of it. But obviously if you have a sensitivity of, to fragrance in skincare, you know, you definitely wanna make sure that you know, you're looking at your ingredients. Now, much like the Dr. Dennis Gross one, this also had like a purplish, bluish kind of like tint to the skin when you first put it on. You give her time to get dressed and get settled, like a couple minutes, two minutes, three minutes, and it, the cast doesn't look as bad, but you can tell there's something on your face that doesn't match when you wear that. This also looks a little shiny on, but again, once I hit it with that Cover FX powder and then the Fenty bronzer, I looked like, you know, the, the, the melanin goddess that, that God had set me to be, right? Because he, he ain't want us to be out here <laughs> looking at she about the face. You know what I'm saying? We, we don't, we shall over. Anyway, so essentially these 
aren't bad. There's still gonna be some casts, especially if you're about my shade or deeper. Um, you're still gonna probably see some cast when it comes to these. But if you don't mind hitting it with the ones and the twos with the, you know, the powder foundation in your shade and then something um, to warm you up and add dimension back to your face, um, then you're good to go. All right, so next up, we are gonna be talking about some tinted mineral sunscreens. Now, tinted mineral sunscreens can be beneficial in your skincare routine. Um, if you're someone, Fitzpatrick, uh, four through six, if you have a persistent pigmentation issue like melasma or severe, hyper, severe hyperpigmentation, um, there have been studies that show that people who use a tinted mineral sunscreen tend to do better you know, with fading their uh, hyperpigmentation or controlling their melasma flare-ups. Um, but the problem though sometimes with some of these tinted mineral sunscreens is that that tint ain't been tinted enough, okay? So this Peter Thomas Roth Tinted Mineral SPF 45 is fairly new. I picked this up because I was like, oh, okay, let's see what, what they're talking about. It says universal tint. Peter Thomas Roth makes the mineral powder brush that I like to use to reapply my sunscreen throughout the day, especially when I'm wearing makeup. So I figured, you know what? Let's give, let's give Peter Thomas Roth a chance. And they turned on us. First of all, universal tint. Really? <laughs> In what universe? <laughs> so the texture on this is going to be like a thick cream. So if you have ever like tried a CC cream, this is like kind of similar in texture. You might be able to use this as like an all-in-one kind of product depending on your skin, the climate, the season, you know, number of factors. Um, because it does feel like you can kind of get a moisturizer um, your sunscreen and then like some sort of color correction or color product depending on your own color because if you're my color this not your color <laughs> but you might be able to get you know knock a couple of steps off in your routine should the tint work for you right um it's got iron oxides in it as well um <laughs> what are some other good points <laughs> I mean, I'm here looking for something else positive to say about it. So, so far the positives is that, you know, it's got the iron oxides in it. So, you know, that's working for you if that, that ticks something off your list. So I will say that it did feel lightweight. It has like a slight matte finish. What universe? This is a universal tint. It's, it's not universal over here. Um, but uh, even when you try to hit, you, you can't hit this with the ones and the twos real quick, right? Like if you want, if you're my, about my complexion or deeper, you can't hit it with the ones and the twos. You need to get a medium or full coverage foundation to get this to look proper on your skin. And to me, that is a whole lot to be doing. I feel like you might as well just get, you know, a whole different type of product and then put makeup on top of it or just get one of the better performing mineral sunscreens and you know I'll link you to where some of the better ones like my 2020 list and then I just did one where there were two that I was like wow these are probably two of the best ones that I've ever tried so I'll link that for you to check it out I feel like that's just a big waste of time if this tint is not close to your skin tone and I have similar sentiments unfortunately as well for the Kiehl's so the Kiehl's super fluid UV mineral defense um broad spectrum SPF 50 plus a couple good things that it's got going for it it's lightweight um, it has like a slight matte finish. It is fragrance free. So if the, you know, if that's something that you're looking for, um, this tint though, it's not it. <laughs> Universal in, in which universe? Like I'm, I'm like, yeah. Now Kiehl's has a chemical sunscreen that I like that comes in the similar packaging and it has like a similar feel to it. Obviously it's, it's a chemical. So, you know, there's not, um, we don't have that white cast issue with that particular formula um, that I actually like, but this was like... And if you've ever wondered why mineral sun, some mineral sunscreens are so bad, check out a video that I did with cosmetic chemist Esther Olu. She breaks it down, so check that out. Um, again, with this, you, you, you can't hit the ones and the twos real quick. With this, you're gonna need a medium to full coverage foundation to kind of like, you know, and the thing is medium to full coverage foundations nowadays are like some people like you say full coverage foundation and like they think like a big mask, right? The way that they make these full, a lot of these full coverage foundations nowadays, a lot of them still cover really well while looking like skin. So don't, don't sleep. 
but I just think that that's excessive. Those are a lot of steps. But some of you guys like to have lots of steps and lots of things. So if that works for you, you know, by all means, but I, I would not, unless the tint works for you without you having to do much to, you know, make, <laughs> make you look like your regular self, then <sighs> leave me a comment. Would you still try these? Have you tried these? Are these in your routine? Let me know. Now we are in the makeup portion of this video. So one of the best like mineral sunscreen containing makeup products that I have ever tried is this Ilia Super Serum Skin Tint. Now there's already a full video on it, so make sure you check that out. I talk about what shade I wear, and I, I uh, swatched a couple of other shades. They've since added more shades to their shade range. I don't have those, but you know, make sure you check out the video to kind of get an idea of what shade to get. Um, but that's really good. Um, then I went and was like, you know what? Bare Minerals. Um, Complexion Rescue, this is a tinted hydrating gel cream, SPF 30. Now what's great about this is that you might be able to treat this like you would a CC cream where it, it covers a bunch of steps. So your moisturizer, your um, color coverage, and your sunscreen all in one. You just have to make sure that you use the uh, an adequate amount in order for something like this to um, add up to the sunscreen that's the SPF that's listed on the label. And that's typically two to three fingerfuls. I don't necessarily think that people are putting two to three fingerfuls of, uh, <laughs> of a complexion product on their face, neck, and chest. So if you're gonna be wearing something like this and you know you're not gonna like really cover, use your regular sunscreen underneath as like your base. And then anything you put on top will be, you know, just like some added protection, like if you missed a spot or something like that. But just know that if, say for instance, you have your base sunscreen is an SPF 30, and then you put an SPF 30 product on top, you're only getting SPF 30. <laughs> you're not getting a 60 all of a sudden. They don't, it doesn't like, you know, it's not like Megatron. It doesn't add up and, and you, you know, like there's no levels to it, right? It's okay. So <laughs> I think this is probably better suited for people with drier skin. Um, it, the, and they definitely need way more shades. Um, I picked up the two deeper shades, which was Sienna shade 10 and then cinnamon 10.5. Sienna shade 10 was probably a better match for me. It's not a perfect match, but this is probably the closest I'm going to get to my complexion in this, um, foundation, um, range. So the thing 10.5, um, is not darker than 10 in some foundation ranges, just cause you know, you go a, a number up on the scale doesn't necessarily mean it's darker. Sometimes it just means it's a different undertone which was the case here. So 10 was a better match for me than 10.5, although 10.5 looks a little bit lighter than 10. It's just like a difference in undertone. Um, but yeah, I would say this is better suited for someone with drier skin. Um, definitely set it with powder if you have oily skin and you just like feel like trying it anyway. They, they need way more shades because this, 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 this ain't it. You know what I mean? Um, <laughs> then, the funny thing is, this has even fewer shades, but I think because of the type of product that it is, you, we would get more flexibility. So this is the Beauty Counter Dew Skin Tinted Moisturizer SPF 20. Now an SPF 20 um, might be okay if like you're just in the house, you know, you know, on your computer, passing by windows and stuff like that. It might just be okay for that, provided you put the, you know, two to three fingerfuls, which I don't think that you would with a product like this. So just put your base sunscreen on in the morning, face, neck, and chest, whatever sunscreen you use for your body. And then this would be just like extra, although you're not gonna get, you know what I mean, okay? So this one, although deep is not looking very deep, <laughs> there's something, now I looked on the description for this product and it doesn't say anything, but it feels like the product adjusts somehow to your skin tone. Um, either that or the um, product is very, very, like it really shears itself out so that you're not really seeing the tint anyway. But what it does do for your skin, do for your skin, pun intended, I guess, is it leaves this dewy finish to the skin. So not for me, I have oily skin, I don't need anything. I, I, I already get dewy 
<laughs> like an hour or two in, you know, sometimes with my skin, depending on the weather. But um, if you have drier skin, this might be a nice option to look into. Um, but deep is the deepest shade that they have. But I was still surprised at how this kind of like looked on my skin. So don't rule it out. The only thing that sucks is I don't think that they sell this brand at any stores, but you can try it out. I think you have to like, kind of like buy it online and then if it doesn't work out, you know, uh, request a return. But yeah. <laughs> now, powders. So one of my favorite powders, mineral powder sunscreens to um, touch up my makeup as well as touch up my sunscreen throughout the day is the Peter Thomas Roth um, Instant Mineral Sunscreen, blah, 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 blah. I'll put it up on the screen and, and link it below as well as everything else that was mentioned in this video will be linked below. Um, but I can't find mine. Like it's either in the pocket of a coat and I have many coats that I switch out or it's in a purse somewhere. And it's just like, I don't even have that many purses. So where's, where the hell is that sunscreen? Anyway, I don't have it to show it, but that's one of my favorites. And that's usually what I um, like to use to, like I mentioned, top up my sunscreen or to uh, touch up my makeup throughout the day. Pretty good. Now the thing is, I was like, okay, I really like this, but can I find inexpensive options um, that I could recommend to you guys? And not really. <laughs> I figured out why that one in particular is so expensive because I was like, all right, well, let me just get a mineral powder. So this one is the Sun Kill SPF 46 PA with three plus mineral powder. Um, it works really nicely. So you can use it to set your makeup, um, but you could theoretically use it to touch up your makeup throughout the day, but the packaging is not convenient at all. Like, um, I'm not even sure <laughs> what that is, but like I kind of like opened it up on the bottom to get to the powder and it's, it's just messy and it's not very like convenient to reapply throughout the day. I mean, some people are daintier than others. Maybe you can make something like this work to save a couple bucks. But um, I do find that the brush is probably why some of those middle, like Color Science has one that's pretty expensive too. And I'm gonna assume that the, the packaging is what makes it so expensive. Now there, there are other brands that make like these mineral powders and like this kind of packaging, but they suck <laughs> like really bad. Even Super Goop, like this one here, this is the Super Goop Resetting 100% Mineral Powder SPF 30. This made me feel like I went in my mommy's purse and like she put a child lock <laughs> on her stuff. Cause I, I was like, how the heck does this thing work, right? So it, I do like that it has the like two protective shields. So the, the thing to protect the product, so the product's not spilling. Um, and then it's got this to protect the brush. If the brush is not like, you know, getting dented and whatnot. But what's confusing is like, it's like, okay, I click, but you can't click too much because then you're gonna, open up the product here but then I was clicking and clicking and clicking and no product was coming out I'm like what the hell but then I finally got the product to come out and I feel like it's just so clumsy and like no me gusta <laughs> um the, the powder itself is pretty nice though so if you can when you finally are able to get it to come out um, I do think that the powder is really nice. It's not substantial enough to kind of like cover up the cast um, like of another like ashy looking mineral sunscreen. For that you definitely need something like 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 this that has more coverage. But it's not bad, it's just the packaging sucks though. Um, and then I was like, you know what, let me see who else has like these mineral brushes. So this is the Tarte C Set and Protect Minerals Powder Sunscreen SPF 30. Um, the packaging on this one wasn't bad. I actually like the packaging on this one. Um, you kind of press down here to get the powder to come out and the brush isn't bad, but what's bad about this is the actual powder. It looks extremely white and ashy on dark skin. <laughs> so, boo. <laughs> so I would not, you know, I wouldn't mess with that one. Um, then I also, I probably got powder on my hair. <laughs> then I also got the Bare Minerals Mineral Veil. Um, this is also not very convenient, like, to take with you on the go. This is an SPF of 25. Um, but at least it has, like, this, um, protective pouch, like, right there that you can kind of, like, click close so the powder doesn't come out. But 
if you are my compl about my complexion or deeper, that don't even matter because this is going to look white <laughs> on us. Um, Bare Minerals does have colored powders. I don't know that they all have um, an SPF uh, in them. Um, but if you're just looking for like a powder foundation, maybe to put over one of these like ashy <laughs> mineral sunscreens, um, the Bare Minerals Matte Loose Powder is one of Acne Expert's favorite foundations for acne prone skin. And if you want to know more about why that is and some other foundations that she likes for acne prone skin and what you, you know, the ingredients you need to look out for, make sure you check out that video. All right, so I think hopefully this video has the same energy as the one that I previously filmed that, you know, I couldn't put out because it was like, where is she at? Is she on an Atari? Is she there? Is she here? Where? It was a mess. But hopefully you've learned some things from this video. Like if you were gonna do the hit, hit your mineral sunscreens with the ones and the twos, let me know below. If you're someone where you're just like, you know what, I am confident in my white cast and I just go on about my day with just that blatant white cast on my face, let, let me know that too, because that that's pretty ballsy of you. <laughs> but, um. Also, let me know any other hacks that you have for like your mineral sunscreens. And when I say hacks, I mean like makeup stuff, like that you put over your sunscreen because you don't want to mix anything into your sunscreen because you can, you know, mess with the efficacy of it. I know that there was a study with the Derma Blend. As a matter of fact, I had the dermatologist that was in the study on the channel um, with the Derma Blend and they tested those, but I feel like uh, L'Oreal is kind of walking back on that a little bit. So, you know, un until they walk forward again, <laughs> don't mix anything into your sunscreen because you can um, dilute it and not have the proper SPF. So check out the videos that I talked about here. Thumbs up because having to redo a video, have you spent all that time? I'm just glad I caught it the same day because sometimes I film videos and then don't look at the footage for a couple days until it's like time to send it to my editor. I would have been so pissed because I would have had no time to refilm. Anyway, guys, follow me on social. The links will be in the description box and I will see you fine folks in my next video. Bye, guys.